In the mountains in the south of Jiangxi province lies the quiet ancient village of the Hakka people. During the Northern Song Dynasty, the ancestors of the Zhong family left Yingchuan Henan and settled here. They chose this beautiful place, which was inhabited by numerous egrets. Here, they built a village. For more than 870 years, the Zhong family has been living here, passing down their unique customs and culture for generations. Today, over 2,000 descendants of the Zhong family still live in Egret village, enjoying a secluded rural life. Over the past 60 years, since the establishment of the new China, not one crime has been committed here. This is all due to the ancient rules left by the ancestors of the Zhong family. Especially the word kindness. <laughs> How beautiful. The Hakka have a family tradition that demands respect for their ancestors. At every family ritual, they express their reverence for their ancestors and remind their clansmen to behave themselves. In the liturgy of worship, one can still find the advice their ancestors left for them. It is sacred and everlasting. It is do good and leave kindness to your descendants. Since ancient times, Egret village has been famous for its kind and charitable people. In southern Jiangxi province, there is a saying that in Egret village, there are no starving beggars, no children who cannot afford school, and no elders who end up dead without a casket. This saying was first coined by a lady known as Senior Madam Wang. There is still an ancestral temple for her, maintained in Egret village. This is rather rare in a feudal society, where men are considered superior to women. This is the statue of Senior Madam Wang, erected in memory of her kindness. She did many good deeds. Uh, the warehouse back there is named the Volunteer Warehouse. She took in orphans and children who couldn't afford their education, and they would receive education here. She even hired teachers for them. Oh, look at this spot. Two steamed buns and one bowl of porridge for the lonely elders to eat every day. Senior Madame Wang was a concubine of the Zhong family in the reign of Qianlong during the Qing dynasty. Though the family was wealthy, she was frugal. She wore simple clothes and followed a vegetarian diet. The money she saved was spent on medicine for the ill and grains and clothes to give to the poor. She even bought caskets for the dead without families so they could be buried properly. Before she died, she told her son to keep 60,000 kilos of rice in the volunteer warehouse, leaving instructions that it be handed out within the same year. Goodness will have a good reward. This was taught and exemplified by senior Madame Wang. Her four sons and grandsons worked in official positions and constantly did things for the benefit of civilians. Her story reached far and wide, eventually reaching Emperor Qianlong. He was greatly touched and bestowed honorary titles onto her. Clansmen built an ancestral hall for her in front of the volunteer warehouse. From then on, the ancestral hall has become a haven for the poor in Egret village. It has been here for over 200 years. 85-year-old Zhong Yi Shan was educated as a child in the free private school of senior Madame Wang. The school was free and we received 150 kilos of rice if we graduated from primary school. We got another 150 kilos for graduating from junior high school. We could receive even more rewards if we graduated from senior high school. It was 500 kilos of unhusked rice and it was not only for me but for everyone. According to Chinese tradition, 
A virtuous woman influences three generations of her family, allowing them to prosper for a long time. Senior Madame Wang blessed generations of her descendants because she was kind. In Chinese culture, whether a man takes the right path in life or his life's worth depends on whether he has made a contribution to society. The most basic thing is whether or not you are kind. Look at senior Madame Wang. She was merely a concubine. She was a woman who did not enjoy a high social status, but she donated nearly her entire fortune to the needy, and thereby she created an atmosphere of generosity in the village. After her death, an ancestral hall was built to immortalize her memory. People have adapted her story of educating her descendants into a Tongha opera called Educating One's Son. In the last 200 years, the opera has been sung at every traditional festival that has taken place. Why do you read it like that? If not like this, then how should I read it? Give me that. Face the other way. Kneel down. Older spectators listen to familiar dialogue and singing, while younger ones watch with eager eyes as humorous plots unfold. The opera has brought untold joy and happiness to all, and the next generation of the Zhang family is unconsciously influenced by it. In 2004, the Egret Village Foundation for Education was established by a group of young people prompted by Zhang Yishan. He believes that people must nurture their tradition of kindness. So you... It is a tradition. We told them. And then after that, uh, the young man proposed that we should set up a foundation right away uh, so that poor kids in the village can go to school. There are just over 2,000 people in the village. Yet they raise thousands of yuan in donations each year for the Education Foundation. A brochure is printed out every one or two years to let everyone know what money we received. It is very detailed so people can see clearly and see exactly how, uh, how we use the money. Someone donated 4,000 yuan. Yes, that's right. Mm. Many have donated a few thousand. Someone donated only 10 yuan. Yes. You also recorded that? It does not matter how much, as long as they mean well. There's no such thing as a small act of kindness. Many small acts of kindness lead to great virtue. With the support of the villagers, the Education Foundation has financed over 80 students. There's an old saying here. Too much money hurts your son. It means that leaving too much money to one's child will hurt him. That is why we donate our spare money to children who are poor but are also eager to learn. This is a blessing. In Egret village, any family who encounters difficulties can get help from others. Zhong <laughs> Ho-ying goes to school in the county. She returns to Egret village only on weekends. Her parents died young. She had no choice but to live with her grandmother. Unfortunately, their house was washed away in a sudden rainstorm a number of years ago. The villagers helped them to get through it. The house fell down completely and only the bare ground was left there. Then all the neighbors came to help. They provided money and strength to help us rebuild everything that was lost. It was a two-story house. Children even helped me with the bricks because they thought I was old. I didn't need to pay for anything. In 2012, Zhong Hu Ying was admitted to college. The Education Foundation helped her apply for the Spring Buds program and paid her tuition. The foundation would give her a few hundred yuan for living expenses, either on New Year's Day or other festival days. Her life began to improve gradually. I wanted to pay them back with a grateful heart. I wanted to help them as much as I could when I was on my school holidays by doing some farm work or other chores like that, but they always declined politely. Anyway, being grateful makes me feel good. In 
In Chinese tradition, one never expects to get anything in return for doing good deeds. For thousands of years, the people of Egret village have abided by this tradition. This ancient Hakka village may not be highly developed, but the people here lead a peaceful and happy life. What sets the genealogy of the Zhong family apart is its biography of kind men. When someone did something good, it was documented here. Here it is. Uh, the biography of kind men is for anyone who has done good or kind things for the benefit of the village. They will all be recorded in the lineage of the clan. This is the biography of an octogenarian. Of an octogenarian? Yes, he worked as a doctor. When the poor people came to see him for help, he would treat them for free at no charge. At last, the emperor built him an ancestral hall where people would go to worship him. His ancestral hall is still here. He was very virtuous. He died at the age of 100. Now, we take this genealogy as an example to learn from. A benevolent family will always be blessed. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, the Zhang family transformed from farmers to merchants to officials. 568 became scholars, 17 arts and military graduates, and six either provincial officials or magistrates. Till today, over 20 students from the village go to college every year. As far as the villagers are concerned, goodness makes virtue is the secret of why the clan still thrives and prospers, even after 800 years. There is a saying that a family with much benevolence will always be blessed. In such a family, if the members are always charitable to society, then the clan will see their numbers increase. Because if they always do good, they'll always maintain a positive mind. This will be beneficial to the physical and mental health of the clan. And in doing so, reproduction will never be an issue. Furthermore, they'll increase their chances of succeeding in their careers should they maintain a charitable spirit alongside a positive outlook. The way they see it, helping others accumulates goodness. So is the construction of roads and bridges for the convenience of others. In 2014, a new cement road was laid in Egret village. The two-kilometer-long road has made things convenient for the six neighboring villages, but it was built by the people of Egret village. In the past, the muddy and narrow roads made everyone nearby suffer greatly. To build the road, more than 70 households in the village removed the fish pond and bullpen of their own volition, asking for no compensation and even making additional donations. Uh, the fish pond was modified. The old fish pond was only one meter from here, but it was moved inwards. It was all donated. <laughs> we didn't need to pay. For thousands of years, the villagers have been able to reproduce and survive solely on the land. Here, they get everything they need for life. But for the people in Egret village, there is one thing they value more than land, and that is the motto, it's better to accumulate goodness than fortune. Villager Ye Ching Gun lives on the side of the road. He is a son-in-law of the Zhong family. Now in his 60s, he makes a living as a farmer and earns only around 4,000 yuan per year. Although his life is simple, he removed his pig pen and donated money so the road could be built. I donate every time they want to do something, at least a little. We ought to repair the bridges and roads, and we should contribute. It's better for our descendants. I can't even afford myself a car, but the descendants of Egret Village can. <laughs> Mr. Yes said he would remove the pig pen completely, and he would not ask for any money. That's his contribution. We do good deeds. That's our tradition here in Egret Village. We only need to do good deeds. Repairing things accumulates goodness. 
The Zhang family's tradition of doing good by constructing bridges and roads is a part of their history. During the reign of Kangqi and the Qing Dynasty, a villager named Zhong Zhengying became wealthy through his business. He was always generous to charities. He once donated a great deal to build tea booths, dikes, roads, and bridges. A stone bridge that was built by him still remains standing to this day. Look at this one. It is over 400 years old, and it remains intact. Many trucks pass through here, and the road can withstand the weight. There are no issues. Since the Qing Dynasty, there has been a tradition among the villagers. Those who became scholars constructed a public road of half a kilometer. If one was a successful graduate, the road would be anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 kilometers. They would bring honor to their families and bring convenience to the whole village. Over 400 years have passed, and villagers still remember the good deeds of their ancestors whenever they cross the bridge. The concept that it's better to accumulate goodness than fortune has been deeply ingrained in the minds of the villagers. It even influences the traditional folk activities in the village. Snatching the wooden frame is starting now. The annual Snatching the Wooden Frame brings gaiety to an otherwise quiet village. The wooden frame is a symbol of a prosperous family. Every family wishes to win good fortune. Descendants of six Zhong families have started to rush for it. Young, strong men carry the hopes of their families. The fierce scrambling doesn't conclude until the very end of the day. Power is not the key to success. The final results are often unpredictable, but they are always accepted. If a man doesn't have a son, after two or three years of marriage, he will very much want a boy. If this happens to a man from any family, he will visit every other family in advance and will tell them how much he would like to have the frame, so he gains good fortune. After he visits each of the other families, an unspoken agreement is formed, which allows the man who seeks the frame most to have the frame. Whoever really wants the frame will eventually get the frame. This shows that we Hakkas are of a kind character and only want the best for each other. After the activity is over, people in the village go back to their peaceful lives. Every morning, villager Zhong Zhanzhong goes back to his ancestral house, Lanshan Hall. The ancient house's history dates back 200 years. He is the seventh generation to inherit the house. The hall has deteriorated, and only an ancestral couplet remains. Lanshan Hall, this is the name of the house. Look, there it says, Descendants shall show devoted obedience to their ancestors and accumulate good deeds for the enlightenment of their offspring. For Zhong Zhanchong, this couplet is the most precious treasure he has from his ancestors. Over 80 years ago, several special guests stayed in Lanshan Hall men whose directives have had an impact on China's history. Back in 1931, Commander-in-Chief Mao Zedong and Xu De stayed here. Mao Zedong once slept on this bed. That is the Red China newspaper. It's an original copy. In September of 1931, Mao Zedong stayed in Egret village for three days. There, he held a meeting for his military leaders and ordered the deployment of the third counter-campaign. During the war, the villagers not only donated grain and money, some of them even went to fight to support the revolution. 
On the wall of the Museum of Egret Village History is etched the names of over a hundred martyrs. The glorious history and the magnificent feats of the villagers who did good deeds in society are all here. Nowadays, there have been some quiet changes in Egret Village. Many villagers have moved out of their ancestral houses. However, they have not forgotten the tradition of goodness makes virtue. In Egret Village, people hold a ceremony when they move into a new house. They light incense sticks and respectfully stand in front of the ancestral tablets. They set off firecrackers on their way to the new house. The incense sticks are placed in the middle of the living room and are regarded as ancestral virtue, leaving a good reputation. It represents the passing of the torch. Today is the traditional Chinese mid-autumn festival. Zhang Shanying, who lives in the county, has brought his son and granddaughter back to the village for a family reunion. <laughs> Hakka are hospitable people. The best way to entertain one's relatives and friends is to make pounded tea. The aroma of tea spreads throughout the house. This is known as the blessing of the home. Zhong Shangying's family basks in the warmth of joy and love. Zhong <laughs> <laughs> Shangying is 85 years old. He grew up in Egret village and has been influenced by its culture of kindness. In his 30s, he left the village to work elsewhere, but still helped in any way that he could. Whenever he heard of a problem in the village, whether it was repairing roads, helping with the education of the children, or fixing historic sites, he donated hundreds of thousands of yuan. I'm a man from Egret village. I was born here and grew up here. If I can support Egret Village in its construction, it will make the villagers very happy. Knowing that will make me very happy as well. Today, Zhong Shanying lives with his son. He doesn't have to worry about finances, so he decided to donate all of his pension to public welfare undertakings. We are very fortunate to have enough food to eat and clothes to wear, and we have a house to live in. That's why I can donate this money, and my sons haven't let us down. We do not want for anything. What we wish for are only peace and safety. The people of Egret Village are all happy to do charitable work for others. They believe that one good deed a day leads to more virtue. In Egret Village, every family passes on the traditional culture of goodness makes virtue. For the people who live here, the Mid-Autumn Festival is a popular holiday. On the square in front of the ancestral hall, there is a tower of stacked roof shingles. This represents the best wishes of the villagers. The preparation is complete, and in a few hours, night will come and everyone will be ready. The bottom of the tower is lit. In an instant, flames have turned the sky red. Yeah! 
On the evening of the mid-autumn festival, the stronger the fire from the tower becomes, the more prosperous their lives will be. For the people of Egret Village, money has never been the standard used to measure happiness. As long as they have good intentions and a grateful heart, the spiritual values passed down from their ancestors remain the true source of their happiness. Shall we? 